Whenever you're coding in VEX, you need to be very specific about what kind of data you're altering or creating. With this, we have floats, which is any number which allows for a decimal value, integers, which are numbers which do not allow for decimal values, strings, which are non-numerical values, so words or file paths would be an example, and vectors. And vectors are a collection of three numerical values. Now you'll also see vector twos and vector fours, and that simply says a collection of two values or a collection of four values which describe something. So often the position in space, x, y, z, is represented as vector data, and same with color, RGB. Now there are more data types than this. We also have matrices and we also have various other components that you can program. But in most circumstances, these are the main things that you'll be working with. And that's where we're going to start. Now that we have this knowledge in mind, let's take a look at the various wrangles and areas inside of Houdini where we can use VEX. So I'm going to create a VOP because thus far I imagine you guys have been trying stuff with VOPs, point VOPs, primitive VOPs, all that kind of stuff. And we'll start here because it's familiar for a lot of you. And if I double click in here, you'll notice that we have our attributes right here, and then we have our exporting attributes right here. And the idea with VOPs is that we take these nodes, like for instance, a noise, and we do something with this data to, again, give us some sort of different result by the end of it. So if I want to add this noise to our current position, I can do something like this, and then we are left with a different result in SOPs. More importantly, if I go to my geometry spreadsheet, all we really did was change these values. And all of that happened, if I right click and go to VEX VOP options, all that happened through this VEX code, which is a lot of code for something that's kind of simple, like a noise. And so this is VEX right here, and it looks pretty crazy at first, but there's actually a much easier way to code things. And instead of using these VOPs, we're going to be using these wrangles. So if I type in wrangle, we have a bunch of different kinds of wrangles that we can use. And really these wrangles are pretty much the same kind of thing. If I double click, all we have here is, in, is an attribute VOP. And this is the same exact context that you saw before, except the only node we have right here is this snippet, which means run this code and we're going to run it over points or we're going to run it over primitives, whatever we mention. So really this point VOP and this wrangle are kind of both of the same world in a way. The wrangle just lets you type in a few lines yourself, and it might not sound like much right now, but saving lines of code here can make a huge difference whenever you're simulating millions of particles or just trying to speed up your scene. Okay, so we already mentioned that we have this attribute wrangle, and right now it's set to run over points, which means that for every single point, it's going to run this code. And I can do the same thing for primitives and vertices, and I also have this detail in numbers. So let's go to our geo spreadsheet, and first of all, recognize that we have points, vertices, primitives, all the attributes that live here, and this detail. Now this detail, what this means is that if we want to store some information once, for instance, Let's say I have this run over points and I just make something really quick. If I create a string attribute here, so S for string, at means create an attribute. We'll call this file path. And I set it equal to here is a file path. And you know, I can do, you know, type whatever I want right here, blah blah blah. And we end this with a semicolon. Well, as a point attribute, it's storing this file path on every single point, 
which is very redundant. It's a lot of information which is unnecessary. And again, once you have millions of particles, this starts to actually slow down your scene, which is why we have this details context, and which is why we could say run over detail. So we run this only once, so that now, instead of associating this information with every point, this detail is brought along with the stream of data that the attribute wrangle is running through. So that's what that detail is talking about here, and that's what the detail is talking about with this run over. It means evaluate this once and store the results over here in the detail. Now I'm going to come back to numbers here in the future, but just know for now that with the numbers, we are specifying a certain number of times that this code is going to be run. In the next lesson, let's take a look at how we can create attributes, how we can create variables, the differences between those two, and start making some interesting things happen with this particle simulation. If you'd like to follow along with the full course, be sure to visit my new website, cgforge.com. Thanks for watching.